if you look at log 9 as i mentioned it's primarily a nanotechnology and material science company and uh, we focus on uh, developing technologies for filtration and uh, energy space and uh, two of our products are in the filtration space uh, uh, primarily uh, for containment of oil spills uh, so that's the subsidiary of log 9 now based in mumbai and we are supplying it uh, to indian refineries uh, ports and also exporting it to uh, shipping lines in singapore hong kong and places like that uh, so that that's that was one of our products and now what the company is focused on is uh, basically uh, building new age uh, energy solutions for electric vehicles so it's a aluminum fuel cell uh, that we are building uh, since the last 18 months and uh, we have been extremely uh, quick and cost effective also on that uh, technology front uh, as far as as compared with our uh, israeli competitor which took almost 7 uh, 8 years to reach to a stage where we are today so uh, that's the flagship product of the company now we have a team of around uh, 60 people now and uh, 70 to 80% of that team comprises of uh, scientists from various iits isc and other research institutes so we have a very uh, active uh, technology team uh, product development team and that's the reason we have been able to use that expertise available to us in house uh, to come up with this product corona over in less than 10 days any startup journey it has a lot of ups and downs but uh, particularly if you are trying to build a uh, core technology a hardware based uh, venture in india it's uh, it's uh, even more uh, tough so i would say it's 10 times tougher than uh, building a app based or a uh, saas based or something like that so uh, it's even more difficult we are three co-founders uh, uh, i and karthik are from it roti Uh, so I did my uh, bachelor's uh, like B.Tech in uh, metallurgy and material sciences uh, from IIT Roorkee, and then did my PhD in nanotechnology from there itself. Uh, Karthik is a chemical engineer from uh, Roorkee, graduating in 2017, and uh, we started this company uh, in uh, 2015 uh, with an idea that graphene is something which interests us, and that's the material we are uh, will uh, kind of uh, take up in India and do a lot of research on that material and come up with products. that was the idea uh, i started working in nano technology particularly in my second year of uh, btech in at id roorkee and that that started with uh, my uh, one of my grandfathers uh, who was a scientist at npl new delhi uh, he uh, uh, was retired at that time and then he uh, uh, decided to advise me and uh, uh, guide me uh, into my journey on nano technology so that's where it all started and uh, then uh, in 2015 i met uh, by the end of 2015 i met pankaj sharma who is a third co-founder and he has been involved uh, with uh, bio nanotechnology based stuff for the last uh, 10 to 15 years uh, built two companies uh, uh, around that and one of the companies is uh, developing a solution for brain cancer surgery so uh, that's the uh, team uh, the founding team that we have I think it's very important because unless and until uh, you know the person, it is really difficult uh, uh, to take this journey forward. It's a tough journey. Uh, there are lots of ups and downs, and uh, I I always say that uh, starting a company or starting a venture is like a marriage. So who you start with, it's it's of paramount importance. Like how uh, far and long can you take? Not very uh, many. Investors are looking at this kind of uh, stuff, and then there is also a uh, widespread, uh, I would say, uh, mindset in the Indian ecosystem that technologies are not built in India. So, uh, yeah, okay, if it is built in Israel, if it is built in US, if it is built in Japan, uh, it would be good. Uh, but uh, people always receive technologies developed in India with skepticism. And I think uh, that's all. Although it's a, it's one of the downside, but it's also one of the factors that keeps me moving every day. Uh, that we have to break this uh, conundrum and and uh, come on the other side so uh, i think uh, that's one of the biggest challenges that we have faced in the last 5 years with this thing when people only believe uh, uh, people uh, sitting in the valley or uh, uh, in those parts of the world then it's better that you get them to uh, validate your technology and then uh, give uh, people in india confidence that what we are saying is uh, authentic and it's uh, so that's what we did so we got one of the individuals who was involved in the battery space uh, for a long long time and uh, he uh, he came on board he validated us uh, saw our technology spoke to us multiple times and then gave a report saying that our tech is superior to uh, the company in israel which has been building it for the past 7 8 years and that gave us uh, a lot of confidence that uh, uh, they can go ahead and 
पार्टनर पे जा सकते हैं this fuel cell is like an engine right so uh, whether you put in in a in a vehicle or uh, you use it as a power source uh, for power backup so first uh, port of call for us in the market is as a stationary power source so we are working with the uh, companies which uh, uh, produce uh, this diesel generators and providing them an alternative to uh, to have a clean uh, and uh, uh, completely noise free solution uh, for generating power backup and that that's that's those are the trials that will start first and then uh, moment we have 2 3 months of data on those trials we'll start uh, prototyping for a full blown uh, uh, vehicle the normal uh, generators that you use in your house or restaurant and stuff but uh, the the use case that we are going after is the telecom industry uh, because there is a lot of uh, pilferage that happens in that industry of diesel and everything and because of that the cost is very high at the same time uh, uh, there are a lot of noise issues like for example if there is a uh, telecom tower within the city limits and all of that so we are targeting the telecom industry first and working with the uh, companies uh, which uh, deal with providing diesel generators to telecom towers and uh, so that's that's the way we are going if i talk about governmental support uh, we have received a uh, lot of support from niti ayo but in terms of concrete financial support or any kind of incentives that is yet to be seen and as 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 we always say that uh, individuals or companies in india grow despite of the government so uh, that's what we are banking upon but uh, let's see hope uh, the idea and the inclination is to do it in india but uh, unless and until there is the right kind of support in the ecosystem and the government can really push for it uh, we'll have to obviously way way down a lot as far as the supply chain is concerned uh, so most of the raw materials that we want uh, for our system is available within india so that's a good part and uh, we really need to i, I, I don't uh, recall any uh, particular uh, raw material that is that would be imported from outside apart from the reason that okay you might need electronic gadget in, as part of the whole system which is uh, cheaply available from outside Uh, but if you talk about the core uh, of the technology, which is the fuel cell itself, all the raw materials of the fuel cell are available, are very well available within India. So from that perspective, supply chain should not be a problem. Uh, if you look at uh, aluminium fuel cell, there are many, many, many advantages over the lithium-ion battery technology because a, it's a power generating solution. So that basically means is that you, you have a fuel which you can use to generate power. and that that means that you don't need any charging so yeah, the charging time gets completely uh, removed at the same time uh, the, the need for charging infrastructure gets removed and all you need is a is a supply of uh, solid aluminium fuel uh, which can be made available at the existing fuel stations itself uh, the second part is that the range that you get on the vehicle is uh, far beyond what the current electric vehicles can provide so uh, with aluminium fuel cell you you are looking at a range of more than 1000 kilometers so even your intercity vehicles For example, if you are going from Delhi to uh, uh, Mumbai, uh, so right now you cannot use the electric vehicle because where will you charge it, and the time it will take for you to charge and then go again uh, will end up uh, uh, taking you 10 days to reach from Delhi to Mumbai. Whereas with this uh, technology, you can directly go from Delhi to Mumbai without having to even refuel once on the way. Yeah. So in terms of uh, weight, uh, the total uh, weight of the of the aluminium fuel cell required for a similar kind of vehicle. would be around 30 to 40% less as compared to lithium ion but uh, in terms of volume obviously it is uh, 10 to 15% more in volume so uh, but that could be very well accommodated